All right, if you will, just stand with me as we read our text. Amen. Turn to Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 through 27. The context is this is Jesus' great sermon on the mount. It starts in chapter 5 and ends in chapter 7. It's the longest sermon recorded by our Lord. Um, some consider it his greatest we get many of our truths today from it, and this is Jesus' ending of that message. This is his hoop out, okay, where, where, that's where, where the organ, it, it cranks up. Can I, get some, can I get some hoop out organ? You don't know, you don't know nothing about that, Daniel. Okay, we're going we gonna, to go. I know, I know Daniel know how to do it. I, I'm just picking with him. I, I just pick with him because he's young. You don't know nothing about it. Give me some more. Give me them chords, Daniel. Not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord. Yeah. So you, you get the idea. This was the power portion of it. But we'll, we'll just read it, Daniel. <laughs> Amen. Starting at verse 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. In other words, he says, I gave you a lot of things to do. Your faith was not authentic because you didn't do the bulk of what I told you to do, just things that you could get glory for doing. Verse 24, therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on a rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell. And great was his fall. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. Lord, thanking you for this life that you've given us. Father, we thank you for life, for our health, for our strength. Lord, for, for your provision. Lord God, for the hope, Lord, that you're even going to fulfill our dreams and our desires and our pursuits and the things that we want to do good in this world to make this world a better place. But Lord God, help us to understand that you're the architect and it's your lead we need to follow while we're building this life for ourselves. Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that you would turn us from people who are building the building of our own imagination and change us, transform us into people that are building our lives inside the context of your will. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen, you may be seated. Everybody is building something. Let me repeat that to you. Everybody, from the uttermost to the guttermost, is building something. 
We all have common ground in that regard. We all have a common connection with everybody else who has ever been a part of the human race in that we are all building the same thing. We're all building a life, a context to live in. And our goal for most of us is to build a happy life. We want a happy house and a happy home. And in order to build this life, this house that we're all working on, we need building materials. And I have isolated the fact that the average person believes that building a happy life is derived from a combination of four key basic building materials. The first one is security or safety. The second is pleasure. You got to enjoy life a little bit. The third is significance or prestige. And the fourth is love. Security, pleasure, significance, love. Those are the building blocks that most people see as the components to building a happy life. You see, you can't be happy if you don't have security. See, that, that's why we work. See, I owe, I owe, so off to work I go. See, we need the security that comes from having some money in our pockets and money in the bank. We need security. We have homes to keep us safe from the storm, and we lock our doors so that we can feel safe at night. So that is a component. We need a little pleasure in life. Some of us need a lot of pleasure in our life, and we get it in various ways. You, you know what brings pleasure to you, but that is a component to the happy life, okay? We need significant and prestige. We want somebody to look at us and be proud of us and be proud of what we are doing and to hold us in esteem, okay? There is a level of that in everyone and everybody needs a little love, amen? Okay, so these components, if you would agree, are important keys to building a happy life. And everyone has a uh, different ideal configuration of these elements according to their taste. But everyone builds happiness from these four elements. But just having these elements lying around is not enough. Everybody got a little love lying around somewhere. Everybody has a little security somewhere. Every, but that's not a house. Okay, that doesn't make for a life. See, you have to place the pursuit of these things in the proper configuration so you need wisdom to know how much pleasure you're going to have on a given day. See, because if you have too much pleasure on a given day or in a given week or in a given month or in a given life, okay, it will take away from your security. Okay, and if you, if, you, if you don't have, if you do too much stuff to get security, then that might crowd out the love in your life. Okay, and if you pursue pleasure, I mean, if you pursue prestige too much in your life, that might push out some of the love in your life because nobody will want to be around you because you're just self-seeking. Okay, you see, so you need wisdom. You need a design. You need a blueprint. You need a foundation in which to build your house on. Somebody say foundational wisdom. See, you need a foundational wisdom in which to organize your life, in which to organize your house, in which to organize your happy home. And there are really only two sources of foundational wisdom, okay? There are only two possible architects 
in your life. There are only two possible foundations from which to choose from. There are only really two sources of wisdom, of ideas, of information on how to build your house, on how to build your life. You see, the first is you and your wisdom and the wisdom that you get from other people that are surround you and that you expose yourself to. And the second source of wisdom is God and his wisdom. See, there is human wisdom, okay, that you can embrace, and there is the wisdom of God that you can possess. Jesus called them sand and bedrock. Say that with me, sand and bedrock, okay? We need the foundational wisdom, two possible choices. One comes from man, the other comes from God. One is sand and one is bedrock, sand and bedrock. Oh yeah, by the way, what you think doesn't matter so much when it comes to the house that you're building, okay? What you say doesn't matter so much when it comes to building your building. Only what you do matters. Only what you actually build matters when it comes to your house. You see, thinking, hoping, wishing, talking never builds anything. Only doing counts because only building builds. Oh, I'm going to say that one more time. Okay, only building builds. You see, and we are always building even when we're doing nothing. Oh, I'm going to say that was deep. See, see, you are always building even when you're doing nothing because when you're doing nothing, you still have to live in the nothing that you built. Oh, I'm going to say that again. See, even when you're doing nothing, you still have to live in the nothing that you just built by doing nothing. Oh, oh, you, you, don't, you don't hear me. You don't hear me. Let, me. let me put it in today's context in a big, so li listen, let's talk about income inequality. Okay, that's a big subject. Okay, it's something to be said about income inequality. Okay, but, but the reality is income inequality is not a passive phenomenon. Okay, in other words, it, it's, not, it's not like, okay, all of a sudden, okay, um, 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 somebody has something and you don't. When somebody built something and maybe you didn't. Oh, I only got one amen. Okay, I only got one amen, okay? Listen, listen, listen. It's, it's, not, it's not always somebody else's fault, okay, as to why you don't have exactly what you want as far as security, okay, because you have to build your security, okay? You see, listen, you, you, got, you have to build your pleasure, okay? You have to, you have to build your prestige, okay? You, you have to build love relationships. So if you do nothing to love, then you have to live in the lack of love that you built. Y'all yeah. oh, still don't understand. Okay, L listen, listen. Oh, uh, ooh, is this going? Listen, if you quit your job before you have another job, Okay, this is going to help somebody today. Okay, listen, you just built something for yourself. And you got to, you have to live in the nothing that you built. Oh, y'all don't you understand. You still don't understand. L listen, listen, Lewis, if you spend all day smoking weed, You got to live in the nothing that you built. So you're always building something even when you're doing nothing. 
See, because when you're doing nothing, you have to live in the nothing that you've built. Okay, you always build. Everybody's building their house every day. Everybody's chasing something every day, all day. I don't care what you're chasing, whether you're chasing dope, whether you're chasing skirts, whether you're chasing pants, ladies, whether you're chasing kids around the house, whether you're chasing money, whether you're chasing the dream, whether you're waiting to exhale, whether you're chasing God, everybody's chasing something all day. Be it noble or ignoble, everyone is chasing something. Everybody is building a house. And Jesus was keenly aware of this fact. He was also aware that there, uh, of what many are not aware of, is that the house this life that you're building does not just affect you in time, but it affects you in eternity. Not just in time, but in eternity. Jesus says, Matthew 7, 21, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord. See, see the talking doesn't matter. The thinking doesn't matter. He says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, 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 all the, all the Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who what? Builds. He who does the will of my Father in heaven. Let's skip down to verse 24. It says, Therefore, whoever hears these saying of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. Yeah, you're building something. Everybody's building a house that has been established. You're building a house. You're building a life. Okay? But whoever hears these what? These words. These saying of mine, my commands, and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who builds his house on the rock. Jesus is saying, let me be your wisdom. Let me be your architect. Let me be your designer. Let my words, my commands be your blueprint, your foundation for your life. Build your life according to the things that I say. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken them to a wise man who builds his house with piers, with beams drilled deep into the bedrock. And that's what Jesus says. Obey me, and it will be a foundation to you with long piers drilled deep into the bedrock. And no matter what hits your life, you will stand. <laughs> Verse 25, and the rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew and beat on that house and it did not fall for it was founded on a rock. Listen, young people, let me talk to you, y'all young folks. Listen, anybody can stand when life is going good. It's when life is hard when you need a foundation. You need a sure foundation. You need a solid foundation. You know, I'm hearing more and more. I'm, I'm, it, there, there, are, there are so many young people cutting themselves. I never heard of that when I was growing up. You see, you didn't, when I was growing up, you didn't have to cut yourself, okay? It was somebody very willing to cut you. All you had to do is walk out the house. <laughs> see, you had to avoid. See, cutting was a thing. When I was coming, it was a thing to avoid. Not to do to yourself. Okay, what, what that tells me, you don't have a foundation. Listen, listen. There are young people taking suicide packs. They say, if I kill myself, that means you got to kill yourself too. People, listen here. Let me suggest to you, young people, oh, how many young people do I got? How many people do I have that's under 30 do I have in the house? Okay, I'm so glad to see you today. Listen here. I don't care how, how much somebody is your friend, okay? Listen, if they kill themselves, okay, 
Uh, unfortunately, that's your friend, but just let them be dead. Okay? Because that's not, let me suggest to you, that's not built on a firm foundation. See, what you need to do with your friend is be introducing them to Jesus Christ. You see, because, because listen, if, you're cut, if they're cutting themselves, okay, and they're doing this and that, okay, just ask them, if your life is so miserable, why don't you try Christ? Why don't you try to let him make you new? Okay, what do you have to lose? You're already miserable. Okay, you might as well try a different way. They, 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 see, what we're dealing with in those things are, it's a lack of foundation. Anybody can stand when the wind's not blowing. See, anybody can stand when, when the rain's not beating on you. Okay, you need a foundation. And people out there need a foundation. They might look rich. Okay, the house might look good from the outside, but check the foundation. And when the winds and waves start beating on them and they don't have a firm foundation, it says, it says, when the rain descended, verse 27, and the floods came and the wind blew on that house, it said, it fell and great was the fall. You see, a, any wisdom apart from Christ is an inadequate foundation. It may stand for a while, but it cannot stand up to the realities of life. Listen, the commands of Christ are the true foundations of the happy life. And his last and greatest commands are not to be ignored. Okay? And, 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 and we, I know everybody does not ignore them, but I don't think that anybody pursues them like they should. Jesus' last commands, two of them, they was basically the same thing. The first one was to go and make disciples of all nations. Okay? You, 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 listen, you can't be happy if you're not doing this. See, you, you're, not, you're not as happy in Christ if you're not doing it. He says, I'll give you power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, but the power is to be my witnesses. And if we're not doing this on a consistent basis, then we are building on that sand. We cannot ignore these things. That's why we are giving you the opportunities today to go and exercise and to learn how to share your faith with others. And so I'm going to tag Wesley at this time, and he's going to come up and, and, and show us how to share our faith in a smooth and effective way.